Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. I hope you had a great day. Let's take a look at some new Provo Ranch stories. The first story is called, Neighbor Chops Down Our Trees. We live in an old and big manor that has been split into three attached houses. The houses are about 150 years old and were built around five huge giant sequoias which were about 200 years old. In the UK, giant sequoias are very rare and the two in our garden up the house price by about 60,000 pounds. We lived next to two really nice neighbors, one young couple and one old couple. Unfortunately, our old neighbors passed away, so their child and her family moved in. Let's call her Jo. Jo was instantly a pain. We had been sharing chickens with the previous neighbors and Jo agreed to keep sharing them. However, on her nights, she would constantly forget to put them away, so we would have to check them every night anyway. One night, her little brats thought it would be funny to open our personal duck pen in the night. This led to the demise of all of them. And later, the chickens went the same way. About two years ago, there was a storm and one of her sequoias somehow fell over and died. They were understandably distraught but from then on, the jealousy started. She would constantly complain about how lucky we were to have two sequoias in our garden and how our sequoia was making too much shade in their garden. We just thought it was Joe being a pain. There were a few dry threats and we thought the next storm will just blow it down. This was until we came back from a holiday to France to find a huge 6 meter stump and nothing else. I mean how do you get rid of a 100 foot tree in two weeks? Two of our old British oak trees had been crushed as well. My mum and sisters were crying my dad was red in the face. But we had no evidence that Joe had done it. She claimed that there had been a storm and she had to get rid of it. We had a security camera at the front of the house but you can get in through the back if you go through a few fields. We then were given an £8,000 bill for damages to her property and to have the tree chopped up and removed. The wood alone would have been worth a small fortune. We had lost all hope. Two weeks had passed when my dad came running in from the garden. We had put up a wildlife camera a few months ago and it had caught everything. We got a lawyer on the phone and started our revenge. We got a tree surgeon out. He said the tree was an original specimen brought into the UK in 1860, along with the two that were in Elveston Castle Country Park. There were 218 around the UK but only 60 now. He also told us to call out an engineer because the roots might be in the foundation. So when they rot, it could damage the house. Turns out that we would need to redo the foundations. Then we took Joe to court and sued him for damage to property, trespassing, and lots of other smaller claims. It would cost 250,000 to have another sequoia that was 200 years put in and looked after, so it's basically impossible. Plus the damage to the foundation which was 200,000 and the two oaks which were another 25,000. So with the smaller claims, it went to about 500,000 pounds. They had to move out. And we have now paid off the mortgage, done a lovely loft and kitchen conversion, and have basically done up the house and garden as well as plant a 60-year-old sequoia tree in the back garden. We also had our kitchen counter and table made from the old sequoia. We now have a new lovely family living next to us, with who we share chickens, ducks, and pygmy goats. They are very nice and I make a fortune babysitting their kids. The last story is called, Fun in the Night Shift. I work the night shift as a receptionist at a hotel in Norway. Most nights are spent watching Netflix and playing games. Last summer was really slow and I also worked a lot extra. So I ran out of stuff to watch and games to play. One night, I got a mail from Scooter. He wanted to book a room for almost 20 days. I just had to send him the price and confirmation that we had rooms available, and he would then send me his credit card info for me to pre-charge. Normally, we just delete these kinds of mail, but I was bored out of my mind. So I responded with an offer for around $2,000 for the entire stay. I also made sure to inform him that he could cancel for free up until the day of arrival. This is probably the most common fraud attempt in the travel industry. Unlike most businesses, we are able to charge credit and debit cards with only the card number and expiration date. No need for any authentication methods. Our software also allows us to deposit money directly to local and international bank accounts by using the card number. Because of this, guys like Scooter will try to prepay with stolen cards, but then cancel the booking and ask us to refund the amount to a different card. A couple of hours after sending him the offer, he responded with a visa number and told me to charge him as soon as possible. I checked the card with our validation software, and to my big surprise, it did not belong to Scooter. If the validation succeeds, it will return with the card owner's name 90% of the time. I sent him a new mail stating that the card was declined because of insufficient funds. He quickly replied and gave me a new card to try. Guess what, this one didn't belong to Scooter either. 
It wasn't even the same person as the first card. By checking the bin codes, I found which banks had issued the cards. They were not even issued in the same country. My plan was to just call the banks and inform them of the attempted scam. But there were still several hours before I could go home, so I decided to mess with Scooter a bit more. I sent him a reply that the second card went through, and also the reference number for his stay at our hotel. As expected, a couple of hours later, Scooter sent a mail cancelling the order. He asked if we could refund the money to a different card, as he had lost his wallet and deactivated the card he paid with. This card was issued from a Polish bank. Not sure why, but Polish bank accounts are often used by people who want to launder money. At this point, Scooter was probably pretty happy about the $2,000 he soon would receive. I replied that it was no problem for me to transfer the dollars to a different card, as long as it was valid. How fun would it be to also cancel his own card, so that he had to spend $500 for a new one? Not fun enough. In the last mail, I wrote that he could send me the card number, but that our email server would go down for maintenance in a few minutes, so my boss would do it on Monday. It was now Saturday morning, so enough time for the charge bank to call us and reverse the transfer. If he needed the money right away, I told him to call the hotel before I ended my shift. He called almost immediately, and I wrote down the card number and his phone number. I told him I transferred the money, and that it would be in his account around noon. My shift ended, and I went home with all the info Scooter had provided. I wanted to see if I could find out who he was, and of course, this idiot had an open Facebook profile that I found using his phone number. He even listed his address and employer. He lived somewhere outside of London, in an area I would describe as a British trailer park. Houses that were nice at some point, but where the owners had spent nothing on maintenance since it was built. Thrash everywhere, and broken windows that were boarded up or fixed by ceiling holes with garbage. Now to the fun part. According to his profile, Scooter worked at a hotel. This meant that he would have access to card information from guests that booked through online sites. I called the manager of the hotel and told him that there was reason to believe that one of his employees was trying to commit credit card fraud and that the card numbers could belong to their guests. I gave him the name of the people who owned the cards Scooter tried to pay with. And, to no surprise, both had stayed at the hotel. I told him it was Scooter, and the manager just exploded in anger. I'm not 100% sure what he said because he was screaming so loud, but I think Scooter wasn't a normal employee. He worked there through some kind of government training program or something. After talking to the manager, I called both Visa and Mastercard International and told them about Scooter's little business venture. Apparently, it's pretty easy to check if there are more cards that have been involved in fraud, where the cards also have been used at Hotel Scooter. With his Polish deposit account info, they would also be able to pin it on Scooter if he had been successful in scamming anyone and sue him for the amount stolen. The police also called me later to get a statement regarding the whole situation, so I know that the manager reported it to the police. Not sure what happened to Scooter, but according to his Facebook profile, he no longer works at the hotel. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel for more content. I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.